Welcome back. Just a little over a month ago, Nasdaq Dubai started outsourcing its trading, settlement, clearing and custody functions for equities to the Dubai financial market as part of a strategy to increase trading of its equities by individual investors as well as bring them together in one liquidity pool with institutional investors. Earlier this week, I sat with Jeff Singer, the CEO at Nasdaq Dubai, who gave us details on the operation, its success, and at a time of heightened uncertainty, answered the question of what next for UAE exchanges. I started by asking him how the idea to consolidate their trading platform with the DFM came to life. Well, three things actually brought about the idea. The first was the fact that we needed more retail trading. You know, good markets will have a balance of retail and institutional trading, and, and typically institutions will follow what the retail does. And so we had to do everything possible to, to, to tear down the, the friction, if you will, uh, for the retail traders. And so that was the first goal. The second goal was about perception. People mm. wondered if there was enough liquidity on NASDAQ to buy. And so by taking down that, um, you know, all the, all the excuses for not trading on NASDAQ to buy, by consolidating the back office with the DFM, basically, um, you know, there's really no perceptible difference if you're a broker or a member on the, on the exchange. And so the third thing actually was, uh, it was really just a business reason around scale. Uh, anytime that you can combine all the liquidity into one location, you're going to get better valuations and you're going to get better trading and, and, and basically you can grow from there. All right, so how successful has it been? I know that in terms of traded value, you have seen value mm -hmm. increase, mm -hmm. which is great and somewhat surprising in the sense that at the Dubai Financial Market or the other exchange in Abu Dhabi, the ADX, we have seen mm -hmm. traded value drop. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, for the four weeks following July 11th, you did see value, traded value rise by 9%. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that and how, has, how successful has it been to yeah. date? Yeah, so we're very happy about the value going up. Mm -hmm. uh, the way we explain it is that we have a different type of investor in the market. We have primarily institutional investors who are more long-term oriented. And so they've actually um, come into the market, come into the companies that are listed in our market, and then they stay. And so they're not um, leaving and, and selling, and the, and, and the volatility is actually quite low. And so the 9% overall gain is actually was a steady climb as opposed to a, a rocky climb. And so that's probably the biggest thing that would distinguish us. Now, that's the good news, and, and we're very happy about that. But like I said, we need to get more of the retail uh, traders in there as well so that we can get the uh, retail volumes to complement the institutional. Okay, speaking of mergers, we often hear talk of a possible merger between Dubai Financial Market and the Abu Dhabi Exchange. Yeah. How likely is that? Well, I'm not privy to any of the conversations, and so I can only speak what I've heard and what I, what I personally think is the best thing for the markets. Mm -hmm. But uh, how likely it is, you'll have to talk to the government and the, and the officials who are behind the scenes. But uh, I think it'd be very, very good for the market, primarily because, as I mentioned before, anytime you can bring all the liquidity into one location, it will make it easier for all the the members to trade those those shares. It will also make it easier for the international brokers to trade the shares. And so when they see everything in one in one location, it just makes it easier. A second reason why I think it really makes sense is is on the regulation side. Um, typically, what you want to have is harmonization in a, in a small market. And anytime you have competition. In a, in a small market where you don't have the scale that you might need, then you have what I call the effect of two crabs in a pot. Whereas if, if you have one crab in a pot, it crawls out. If you have two crabs, they keep pulling each other down. And, and the market's too small for that, type of, um, for that type of competition. It really needs to be harmonized under one location. So it's really about uh, the liquidity and it's really about the regulation. And if you can harmonize both mm -hmm. of those, I think you'll see more trading going on. And I think it'd be a great perception for the UAE as well, that the UAE is taking the correct steps to bring the capital markets to strengthen it for the, for the next rise in, in, in this next cycle. Well, for the time being, regional markets are still lagging behind. In your opinion, mm -hmm. what are some of the key measures or changes that we need to, to see happen here for things to pick up? I mean. It's obviously, we have some local um, 
events that may have to shape that and also some international ones as well since we do track global equities to a certain extent? Yeah, it, we do. And that's, that's really the million dollar question that everybody wants to know is what is it going to take to improve the markets here? And as you know that markets are a combination of, of sentiment and actual fundamentals. And so if you look at the sentiment and what's driving that, you have the, the, the global picture of the debt in Europe. You have the, the double dip threat of recession or you know bad times coming ahead in mm -hmm. the United States. Uh, you still have in the Middle East and specifically in Dubai, you still have to work out the Dubai world and the heel um, issues you know in terms of you know paying off their debts and making sure that the investors understand there's clarity and transparency there. So there's a sentiment issue that's that's still pretty heavy in, in the world that, that sort of needs to work its way out. Locally, in terms of what could we do to improve the capital markets to attract foreign capital, uh, one of the things I think that need to happen is short selling. I think there needs to be good short selling. In the UAE, because of the way the capital markets are set up, mm -hmm. the regulator could make sure that the, the, the shorts are covered before they actually go on, and that's what you want. You don't want naked shorting, and I could go on what the difference is between short, naked and covered shorting, mm -hmm. but here in the UAE, you could regulate covered shorting much differently than you could in any almost any other market in the West. So that's the first thing that needs to occur. I think another thing needs to occur is uh, delivery versus payment, and some of the things that the MSCI said were, were very important for them to reclassify this market foreign ownership limits. Many in international investors stay out of the market because they don't want to be um, crowded out once they hit that 49% mm -hmm. percent level. Okay. Um, I, I, I touched on this briefly, but I think what would be very important is for the MSCI to reclassify this market from a frontier market into an emerging market. And I think if they did that, then there'd be billions of dollars around the world that would find their way into the companies that are listed on, in, in the UAE. Yeah, of course, once we're classified as emerging. Right. Then, yeah. And there's just a few changes that need to be met, but the regulator and the exchanges mm -hmm. and uh, you know, some of the, the laws might need to change just a little bit to accommodate to uh, make that happen. But when you're speaking of short selling, there are some analysts or investors that are a bit worried that they see it as, mm -hmm. as high risk and somewhat mm -hmm. unethical. What do you say mm -hmm. to that? Well, it's not unethical. Um, people should be allowed to make money when the market's going down, just like they're allowed to make money when the market's going up. And as soon as you put restrictions on short selling, you also put restrictions on liquidity because those, those short sellers are a valuable input into liquidity. And their belief is just fundamentally different. Now, there are some short sellers, and we saw this in 2008, who were, who were abusing the market, and they were pushing down the stocks and taking advantage of a situation that they shouldn't have been able to, allowed to take advantage of. And so the question is, could that happen here? Could the, could the short sellers take advantage of a bearish sentiment and drive the prices of stocks down and make it impossible for them to rise without a ban? And, and that's what I was alluding to earlier. Mm -hmm. There is a way that you can do a covered short selling regime here in the UAE because of the way that the capital markets are set up. And so briefly what that means is that in the UAE, the exchanges and the regulators know where all the shares are at all times. Whereas in the West, it's with the brokers. And so the regulators and the exchanges don't know where the shares are. And so when the shorts were occurring back in 2008, they didn't have a view into what was happening. And so all that they could do was say, stop, time out, it's not working. Okay, that was the only regulatory function that they could perform. Whereas here, we would know who is the shorting, who's got the positions, and if we needed to take regulatory action, we could do that actually quite adeptly because of the way the DFM and the ADX have, have set up their, their structures. So it is very, very possible to do a, a, a shorting regime here that would make it very ethical and, and, and also very regulate. Minimize, yeah, just minimize the minimize risk. Minimize damages, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, last question, Jeff, is about IPO. Obviously, it's tied into sentiment, but yeah. but companies still need to raise capital. Yeah. So when are we going to see that pick up, the IPO market? As soon as possible. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's happening right now. If we were to rewind the clock a year ago at this time, everybody was saying, we wait until 2010. The earliest they were thinking about is Q1 2010, maybe 
um, Q2, Q3. Mm -hmm. Now we have companies that are lining up. We have prospectuses. We have investment banks and the lawyers are, are, are putting all the information together. We have a general group of companies that are getting ready to come out when the market is right for them. But what they're doing is that they're, we've got the prospectuses, uh, they're, they're, they're working out the, the roadshow, they're getting the, the, all the building blocks in place, all the financial statements and everything that has to be done right now, so when the market windows open, they'll be ready to go through, whereas we weren't even seeing that last year. Okay, so, so now we're seeing the, the, the pipeline return and we're seeing some really good companies getting ready to come out. And that's what we'll see first come out first in the market are the companies that have the cash flows, that have a business um, strategy that uh, justifies the need for capital. They're not desperate. You know, they could wait it out, but they're, you know, they want to take advantage of the market conditions as they are. And so those are the first companies that will come out and they're really good companies and I think we'll see some exciting things happen you know, hopefully not in the not too distant future. Well, thank you very much, Jeff Singer, CEO at NASDAQ Dubai. Thank you. And that's it for this week's episode of Business Arabia. If you have any comments or questions about anything you've seen on the program, you can email us on businessarabia at cnbcarabia.com. Don't forget to join us at the same time next week. I'm Nadine Hawa. Thank you for watching.